a video response. I haven't done one of these in a while. This is a good manner of segue for me to utilize to get my foot into the door on the current World Day issue of the day, which is child voting. Cue obligatory 30-second montage of footage selectively chosen and overlapped with Whitney Houston music in order to make an emotional appeal to the audience's delicate emotional constitution. Well, tough nubbins. I don't like Whitney, and I don't care about what all of these other adults have to say for any life. I want to hear you. Children are the future! There is that Dutch angle we all know and love, right kids? Now the last time I did a video addressing news broke, there was a momentous outrage within the chat and the comments section about such an offensive perpetual use of the Dutch angle. So what is it exactly meant to do typically within film? You may be wondering, as I was when I looked it into it. Because I couldn't not make a bid for this. Come on. According to the internet, it is often used to portray psychological unease or tension in the subject being filmed. Well, Franny, you're less portraying tension and you're more creating it for the rest of us. So, let's get you a spirit level and call it a day, eh? What do you say? More to the point, though, we say that children are the future for a reason, Franny, and that's because they're stupid at present, which is why at present, the right to vote is 18, at least in the U.S., mostly. We'll see in a bit. With hopes that come the time that they can actually enact the right to vote in our system, they have somewhat grown out of that stupidity that we all know and love. Although we shouldn't get our fingers crossed, let's be real, the millennial children that have grown into their rights at present aren't exactly the epitome of rational discourse and or good decision making. But continue. Just make sure they don't have a say in it. The mobilized students of Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High have inspired the entire country. And while we wait on legislators to pass meaningful gun control... <laughs> what meaningful gun control, Franny? I'd, I'd really like to know your input on this. What brilliant idea is it that you have that's not already being enacted? You see, we can take the March for Our Lives kids and their movement and their petition that we're all supposed to sign because... Woe is them. Their friends died in a shooting a few weeks ago. Oh, I'm such an asshole. And we can take inspiration from them as to what not to want for gun control. For one, they want a ban on assault weapons like the one used in various shootings. But an assault weapon is not an actual technical term used by any weapons manufacturers, nor is it a military term. I'm a fucking gun noob, and I even knew that. But more to the point, the normie definition given to us by Merriam-Webster states that an assault weapon is any of various automatic or semi-automatic firearms. But under that umbrella term, not only do you have the inclusion of the fully automatic, aka machine gun, which we did not know were already legal for private citizens to own. Hmm. So then what's, what, what's a semi-automatic? You're including a semi-automatic in this umbrella term. So what's a semi-automatic? Well, it can be anything from this to this. Because a semi-automatic weapon, if you did not know, Franny and uh, March for Our Lives kids, is defined as a firearm which automatically reloads, but will only fire one round per trigger pull. That's a pretty hefty range of firearms, if I do say so myself, and I do. You, you see, with legislation such as this, you have to be very careful with what terminology you're going around propagating to the masses, or you might just accidentally elect an official who might completely sign away your Second Amendment right. Prohibiting the sale of high-capacity magazines is the second point on their list. If you're going to ban guns outright, why the fuck would you even bother with high-capacity magazines? Perhaps to make yourself look even more incompetent than you already do. And yes, I am unapologetically bashing on some kids who went through a school shooting and their movement that somehow has gotten the backing of every single large left media news outlet in recent weeks. Because according to you, Franny, they should be old enough to handle my harsh criticisms on their policies. Or rather, their ignorance about said policies. And their third point is closing the loophole and background check laws that allow dangerous people who shouldn't be allowed to purchase firearms to slip through the cracks and buy guns online or at gun shows. This is one I could get behind. Makes sense. Says all the right jargon. Except that essentially this stipulation already exists in normal law. You see, it's not so much where it is that they're selling them so much as who is selling them. Uh, federally licensed gun sellers are required to run background checks, but not all sellers are required to be licensed. Some of those unlicensed sellers do sell at gun shows. So you're not, you're not, you're not in inhibiting a person from selling at a gun show. You're not inhibiting their ability to sell. You're just inhibiting where they can sell. 
Does that make sense? Granted, yes, we should probably have all gun sellers be licensed, but does that take care of the whole issue? Of course not. There are still going to be people who are illegal selling, who are illegally selling firearms because you can't monitor everybody. Unless, of course, you want a police state, in which case I think Black Lives Matter might have an issue with that. But essentially, the stipulation for not selling guns to already dangerous people already exists in the law. You know who may not own a firearm in that state? Minors under 21, convicted felons, people who have been convicted or committed for abuse of a controlled substance within the last three years, anyone who is chronically or habitually abusing alcohol or other substances, Anyone who has been educated, incapacitated. Um, anyone's been committed to mental institutions. Person who's been subject to injunction against committing acts of domestic violence. I think you'll find that your issue might not have to do with the legal system and more so to do with certain ball droppings of government departments within your jurisdiction, both locally and federally. <coughs> PD. <coughs> FBI. And that criticism is one coming from me, ladies and gentlemen. Now, having said all of this, which can be gotten from a simple Google search, mind you, something the kids of this movement certainly know how to do, if reality is a thing and they are millennials, it should negate any and all premise in your mind that children, all baby-faced and still in high school, should be given the right to vote. Why not pass something else in the meantime to show these students that we care about them and their concerns? Like lowering the voting age. For the same reason we don't let children consent to sex, the same reason we don't let them rent cars, the same reason we don't let them go off to war, and coincidentally, the same reason we don't already let them purchase guns. They're fucking idiots. Here's why 16-year-olds voting could be good for democracy. Whoop, there it is. That's right. I devoted an entire tangent at the beginning of this video to gun legislation, which is technically not what this entire 10-minute video is supposed to be about. That's how petty I am. Ever since a gunman killed 17 students with an AR-15 in Parkland, Florida, survivors have done a whole lot more than think and pray. They've gone on national TV and mobilized people around the country to protest, walk out, do sit-ins and die-ins, and even had the guts to confront their pro-gun senator face-to-face. -face. <laughs> Funny how these kids are utilizing, to the fullest extent, their First Amendment rights to effectively do away with their Second Amendment rights. The abolition of which would result in infringing upon a person's Fourth Amendment rights, the right from unreasonable search and seizures, to search for and do away with all of those pesky, pesky guns. Uh, you mentioned your backpack. What do they do with your backpack? They were, I think after we come back from spring break, they're requiring all of us to have clear backpacks. I think one of the most important, one of the other important things to realize is many students want their privacy. There, there are many, um, for example, females at our school when they ha when they go through their menstrual cycle, they don't want people to see their tampons and stuff. And I, it, it, it's just. Um, it's unnecessary, it's embarrassing for a lot of the students, and it makes them feel isolated and separated from the rest of American school culture, where they're having essentially their First Amendment rights infringed upon because they can't freely wear whatever backpack they want, regardless of what it is. It has to be a clear backpack. What we should have is just more policies that make sure that these students are feeling safe and secure in their schools, and not like they're being fought against like it's a prison. Kind of like stop and frisk, you'd have to call it something more logical, like barge in and go through all of your personal effects because you are just the type of person who looks the part of an illegal gun owner. Do you recognize the parallels which I am referring to? Marijuana to guns. Black men to gun owners. In each case, the population of incarcerated males being artificially inflated by bogus stupid laws that criminalize based on simple possession of something. But men in the prison system is something I'm going to address at a later date in a hashtag everything is sexist video. For right now, Franny, you have my full attention. Senator Rubio, can you tell me right now that you will not accept a single donation from the NRA in the future? He couldn't. What's wrong with the NRA? It's a nonprofit organization that advocates for gun rights. Its primary goal, however, today being that of teaching firearm safety and competency, which is something you need in a nation when last year we had, like, 2028 unintentional shootings. Which, by the way, is more than six times the number of mass shootings that we had the same year. But seriously, you, you want to go? You want to go down that, <laughs> that route? <laughs> we can play hardball. I am certainly gay. Here's the total contributions from the NRA as of 2018 election cycle. It's a grand total of 334,768. And then, oh boy, top organization contributors, all federal contributions. And as you can see, when it comes to lobbyists, you have a bigger problem than the NRA's measly $300,000 contribution. That's chump change compared to this, fam. Get on their level. 
Unlike pretty much every other mass shooting, where Americans get shamed for talking about gun control until we forget it ever happened, these students are making sure that the country does not forget about them. Which is what makes them so much more annoying than your average Tide Pod eating, cake face having, baggy sweat wearing, and never done taxes in their entire life, high school student. By all means, let the children say their piece, but if they want to get voting rights, then they should have the right to get drafted into the war as well, be required to pay income tax, and make their own fucking car payments. I'm just saying. How long do you, th do you think you will keep doing this? We're millennials, and we love complaining more than any other generation, so... He's not wrong, I do fucking love to complain. It's my favorite pastime, I've dedicated my entire channel to it. Uh, links in the description down below if you want to subscribe. This generation, it's um, used to get answers right away. You think they're gonna wait for six months or a year for anybody in Congress or any anybody that needs to make the right call? Yeah. In a way, youth impatience and entitlement is paying off brilliantly. Think about it. These teens have never had to wait for an answer they couldn't immediately get from Google while ordering a pizza from an app and FaceTiming a crush in Oregon they made out with one time at summer camp. You think they have the time to wait to get weapons of war out of their schools? Uh-uh. To them, gun control should be as easy as the Domino's app. Which is the exact fucking problem with young people today, Franny. People my age and below have a distinct problem with expecting and in fact demanding instant gratification for their demands with little to no regard for the consequences of what they just set in motion. Everything has to be right now and instantaneous. They're so ready to grow up and become adults that they've lost sight of exactly what that means. Because being an adult means taking responsibility for yourself in any and all regards, which means you have to make the decisions based on analyzing every single possible variable that you can think of in an effort to predict the best possible outcome for yourself and sometimes others if you have people depending on you. These kids have no idea what it means to make a responsible decision that affects more than the scope of what they know and have experienced, which if it were an already obvious is a pretty limited scope. Trust me on this, as a kid who had the responsibility of caretaking two other kids imposed upon her at the start age of nine? You do not want to be that kid that grows up too fast too soon, Jesus Christ! I feel for these kids. They were exposed to a tragedy at an impressionable age and feel powerless to change anything. But trust me, more responsibility is not going to be the thing that fixes it all for them. In fact, it is the start of the beginning of the end of their youth, and they don't deserve that. Hold the bump stocks, side of registries. Hey, you guys want extra background checks? I forgot how unfunny you are. Jeez, oh god. <clears throat> But because they're just a bunch of kids with no political clout, some are wondering why they should be taken into consideration at all. Just listen to Florida lawmaker Elizabeth Porter as she argued against the Parkland students' demands for gun reform. We've been told that we need to listen to the children and do what the children ask. Are there any children on this floor? Are there any children making laws? Do we allow the children to tell us that we should pass a law that says no homework? The adults make the laws because we have the age, we has the wisdom, and we have the experience. Wait, wait, wait. We has the wisdom? Way to instill confidence. This coming from you, Franny, who would have us give children who a little more than a month ago were eating Tide Pods. It's right to vote. Trust us, we has wrote in the laws before because we is the lawyers and we are going to bring you legislation. The ironic part about Franny playing grammar Nazi is that she effectively is mocking not just the legislator, but even more accurately so, the very high school students she wants to give voting rights to. Franny, how long has it been since you were in high school? Because I can tell you based on my experience from a measly two years ago, you're not far off. And the idea that teens can't vote so who cares about them was echoed by a guy who was just told he can't eat crayons anymore, Tucker Carlson. So if they're too young to buy guns, why should they be making my gun laws? They are not making your gun laws. They're not citizens. They're children. They're not, children. Children. They're not of 18. They're Americans, Look. but they don't have the full rights of citizenship because they're not adults. They can't drink alcohol. They, a lot of them can't drive cars. You don't want them to buy guns and they Tucker. can't vote. Plus, everyone knows that bullets can only hurt you when you turn 18. <laughs> You're still not funny. Please, please, stick to your day job. Wait, this is, this is your day job. You know, it's amazing. Where his empathy ends is just where his stupidity begins. He truly is a douchebag carousel. How, Franny? Can you articulate for me exactly how? Or are you just gonna show another edited down clip of selectively 
taken from another news organization and then drop a one-liner that you and maybe only your cameraman think is funny and intelligent. And yet he and Elizabeth has the wisdom porter managed to bring up an interesting point. Most teens can't vote, but they are old enough to be shot at and die, not to mention own rifles and shotguns in 30 states. Not purchase, however. You'll find that there is actually legal stipulations surrounding that, but I ask you, how could a child legally gain possession of a gun? Well, an idiot parent, that's who. Possession simply means that they have it in their possession, on their person, etc. And how do they get it? Well, some adult over 21 didn't lock it up tight enough, using that proper gun safety the NRI teaches all about. There's not much you can regulate when it comes to nosy kids with sticky fingers, Franny. I don't know if you know this. If a kid has a way in, they will use it. So maybe the question is, should teens be able to vote? Why not lower the voting age to 16? In most national elections around the world, like the US, you have to be 18 to vote. But in some countries, it is 16, including Austria, Brazil, and Argentina. I love this game. Step right up, step right up, folks. Let's play a game called One of These Countries Are Doing It, Then Why Shouldn't We? Would the contestants like to know their options? With the age of voting being lowered to the right number of 16, you get to pick on one of the following countries for you to then immediately adhere to along with one other legal stipulation to be announced with their respective countries. Would you like to hear your options? Too bad, I'm gonna tell you anyway. Austria has laws prohibiting everyone in the country from covering their faces with some exceptions for medical and professional purposes. Argentina has failed to instigate indigenous rights for their people. Brazil has decided to Make it legal to obliterate the rainforest. Cuba, Fidel Castro, need I say more? Ecuador, how about a law that will undermine journalists' ability to criticize and investigate, but it will also limit the citizens of Ecuador's ability to receive public interest information. I know that would affect you, Franny. Malta, how about you can become a citizen for the low, low price of 650,000 euros? Also, unlimited movement around amongst the EU for all time. Nicaragua. Free speech, crackdown, and corruption. Scotland, free speech is dead. The jokes are illegal. The First Amendment is grossly offensive. Yada, yada, yada. Pick your poison, Franny. I don't give a fuck. Does any of this matter? Nope. But if your friends are politically jumping off of a cliff, would you do it too? I don't know. Even it depends how high the cliff is. Bitch, I will push you off that cliff. And in 2014, beginning with their vote on independence, Scotland began allowing 16-year-olds to vote for the simple reason stated by this lawmaker. If we're prepared to send people, uh, young people to the front line and indeed to take their taxes, why should they not indeed have a, a say in what is basically about their future? And that makes sense. Right, we don't make 16-year-olds do taxes because they usually are a dependent and we don't let 16-year-olds fight on the front lines. We don't even let 17-year-olds enlist without parental consent. What the fuck? Why would you bring that up? That's a dead argument. Right out of the water. A lot of teens work and pay taxes, and the injustice of being able to fight in a war that you don't have a say in is exactly why President Nixon signed the 26th Amendment into law, which lowered the voting age from 21 to 18. 18, because the fighting and the drafting age is fucking eight fucking teen. Fucking yes. Oh my god. And the sick reality is that today, with the amount of school shootings, it's almost as if the wars have come home. At least the weapons have. <sighs> Oh, spare me. Yes, school shootings are bad and horrible and woe is me and people die, but you cannot compare some malignant, crazed, fucked up assholery of some lunatic with a vendetta who randomly decides one day to go off on a shooting spree to the actual front lines, going up against multiple enemies in battle who are organized and equally armed. Franny, the children suffered something tragic, but while these children have been effectively given a platform to actually do something about it, there are little, <laughs> there are literal child soldiers around the planet who are actually engaging in warfare as we speak, usually not of their own free will. It's a wobbly comparison at best, Franny. So why not lower the voting age again? Three towns in Maryland have already allowed 16-year-olds to vote in local elections. This is what I was talking about earlier in the video when I said we'd talk about it later. Um, you should have just led with that instead of using other countries as your example, Franny. And yet every time the debate crops up, you always hear the same arguments. I know kids in this age group, and they are dumb as dirt when it comes to politics. I wouldn't put them in charge of their allowance. I remember how I was at 16, and I couldn't have voted for a dog catcher. I was so 
naive. Young people are stupid. Have you ever spoken to them? <laughs> yeah. If we let them vote, they're going to vote for the party guy in the Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> Sure, and when we let adults vote, they vote for the guy in the baseball hat who needs a cheat sheet to show sympathy. Okay, you have a point. But, I mean, when your alternative is Hillary, can you really blame those people? Honestly? I'm not gonna lie, when I was 16 and 17, my first choice for who I'd want to vote for in the presidential election was, first and foremost, the man, the myth, the legend, Vermin Supreme. You know, the guy who wears a giant boot on his head campaigned on the platform of zombie apocalypse awareness and time travel and would have given everyone a free pony? Yeah. That guy. You can judge me for that. I judge me all the time. Remember, this is the generation that had to sit on the sidelines as the country elected a corrupt reality TV star with no political experience. <sighs> Again, you can blame Hillary for that. All she had to do was be a little bit more likable than Trump and she probably would have had the election. Honestly, despite all of the corruption shit that she had, but that's besides the point. But no, Franny, she had to go and neglect campaigning in very important swing states and, you know, fucking insult half of her voter base. You know, everyday average people, Franny. The same people, mind you, Franny, who elected Barack Obama, Franny. So I have to question, Franny, where are you going with this? This is a dead-end argument for you. The Democrats lost because they didn't appeal to the working class on several key issues, including good paying jobs for American workers, making sure Americans have access to affordable insurance, cleaning up corruption in government, and crackdown on outsourcing, etc, etc. I could go on and on and fucking on. You see, there's a lot more to it than your oversimplification of the election. A concept that I, and many others, understand, but obviously not you, and certainly not these high school student children whose entire platform for voting revolves specifically around gun control. The thing that neither of you get is that voting is not a simple one policy issue, it's multifaceted and different for each person who engages in it because each person has their own issues that they care more about. And if their parents couldn't protect them from that, why should they trust them to take care of them at all? For all kids know, there is a monster living under their beds, and masturbating actually improves eyesight. I hope for their sake that you never have children, Franny. Like, ever. You make a horrible mom. Maybe part of the reason teens are seen as not caring about things that affect them is that adults keep telling them they're too stupid and too young to care about things that affect them. Oh no. They can care. They just can't vote. Big difference. When the reality is, they do care. Just ask this 17-year-old who campaigned to lower the voting age in San Francisco. It really matters to me when funding for parks gets changed. It really matters to me when the minimum wage gets changed, and that affects my community. Our country actually has a history of smart, politically active teens. Like in the 60s, when teenagers and children marched in Birmingham to protest segregation. Which, if you remember kids, was deemed illegal by the Supreme Court in 1954. See Brown vs. Board for that. Um, so, no voting necessary. Eh. You see? You really need to better that argument. You're not making good points. <clears throat> or maybe we go with the Civil Rights Act of 1964 for that, which was also passed without the aid of children voting. Franny. Over to. Or the 15-year-old who recently developed a system to detect early stages of pancreatic cancer. He explains why teens are ready to make change. Teenagers, we're at this epitome of creativity where we can dream of wild ideas, but we have enough knowledge to make our ideas a reality. Yes, not to mention the knowledge to make exquisite dishes every week on MasterChef Junior. On the top you will see the puff pastry, and then under that you will see the crepe, and then you'll see the mushroom duxel, the prosciutto, and then the meat. Okay, but I make a mean bag of Trader Joe's gyoza. I cook. I'm gonna say what I say in my video that argues against pedophile activism, see a response to MSG, where I effectively argue against lowering the age of consent to 13 or completely abolishing it. Yeah, that's not a good idea. One of my arguments was, just because a few kids happen to be mature in certain aspects to handle more than the average teen does not mean that we should adjust the rule to accommodate those individual outliers. That's fucking ridiculous. I'm sorry, but that is certainly not how a, a system composed of millions and millions of people works. It can't work based on outliers. We use averages to account for a system that works for most. And that's about as close as you're going to get. I'm sorry, Franny Tough Nubbins. 
By the way, not only is the discussion about lowering the voting age patronizing and stacked against teens, but those who vote on whether or not to lower the voting age are already of voting age, which is a cruel catch-22, and also makes you wonder who in these 30 states voted for the age of consent to be 16. I'm gonna go out on a limb and guess, not 16 year olds. Speaking of the age of consent. And having teens vote might mean good things for democracy. Studies show voter turnout is habitual, so perhaps the earlier you get someone to vote, the more likely they will later on. One study even showed that when young people vote, their parents are more likely to vote too. Yes, because who do you think would have driven them to and from the polls? Bet you most 16 year olds don't have a car all of their own. Franny. In some ways, teens might be more equipped to vote than adults. What? Think about it, they just went through the unit on how a bill becomes a law, whereas their gam gam just went through a red light. That's sages. It makes sense that entrenched political power would be afraid of the youth vote, because young people tend to be open-minded and vote liberal. It's that crazy thing they have, what's it called? Hope. Well, since I'm an outlier and cease to have hope, does that make me the new rule then, Franny? Polling and voting trends suggest that if 16-year-olds in the UK had been allowed to vote whether to exit the EU, Brexit wouldn't have happened. And in the 2016 US primary election, more than 2 million voters under 30 voted for Bernie Sanders. That's more youth votes in the primary than Clinton and Trump received combined. You seem to be forgetting the key reasons why Bernie didn't win the primaries. No, it wasn't because of old people voting necessarily, but because of superdelegates that he didn't due to hot in the South and because he was running on a Democratic platform while raking in just the independent voters. He wasn't as popular with the Democrats as he was with the Independents, which is why he lost the primaries, which is why the general election was between Dolores Umbridge's wicked, evil stepmother and Mr. You Just Ego on the planet. A Bernie would have won. <sighs> You're a Bernie bro. Yeah, I can see it. Yet we shouldn't assume that all young people are necessarily liberal. In Kansas, six teenagers are running for governor because they were smart enough to figure out that the dumb adults who wrote the laws didn't bother writing an age minimum to run. And only one is running as a Democrat. Wait, 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 wait. Now, it's a bad thing for kids to be smart enough to find loopholes in the government. Now it is? Now, now no age restriction is a dumb thing that legislators let slip through the cracks? Careful there, Franny, you're on the nice. The deep state globalist shill. No matter what side of the political spectrum they're on, the one thing all teens have that adults lack is the ability to not give a f about authority. And do you know where that gets them? Too, bro. Why are you yelling? She'll threaten me. If you don't do this or that, then I'm gonna call your PO. You got one more time to hit me, Danielle. You got one more. I ran out four times in one day. And the cops brought me back every time. I don't behave and disrespectful. I steal cars. I steal her credit card. I ain't gonna lie. There's no reason to lie. Everybody know already. Like. Did Did you say the 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 hoes are laughing? Yep. So the audience are a bunch of hoes. Yep. Catch me outside, how about that? Huh? Catch me outside, how about that? Catch you outside? One of the best things about our generation, sure, people think we're lazy and on our phones all the time. We don't respect you just because you have Senator in front of your name. No, of course not. People your age don't have respect for anyone in the slightest. Why do it when it comes to Senators then? And that's really helpful in pointing out the bullshit around things like gun laws. What do you think about this idea of arming teachers? It's stupid. Why? Douglas ran out of paper for like two weeks in the school year, and now all of a sudden they have $400 million to pay for teachers to get trained to arm themselves? 
Really? You know, there could be other reasons for a two-week school supply shortage than money. Me thinks that if your school were actually having a budget crisis, the shortage would have lasted a lot longer than, say, two weeks. Just saying. Really? Teens are the realest, and considering the world they've been handed with massive inequality, rising sea levels, and a president who the NRA spent $30 million to elect, perhaps we should make it easier for them to have a say in the world they're supposed to inherit. To all of the generations before us, we sincerely accept your apology. And we, we, we appreciate that you are willing to let us rebuild the world that you f***ed up. Mm. And you know he's talking about everyone older than him, right? That includes you, Franny. So if conservatives are so upset by teens in the streets demanding their rights, give them the right to vote. And that, that seems counterintuitive though, methinks. <sighs> Franny, respectfully, fuck off with your nonsense. And if they manage to pass laws banning AR-15s or banning homework, more power to them. Because it will have meant that, in a way, they did their homework. You see, I just I can't do it. I do not want the abolition of my constitutional rights to be a school project of some 16-year-old who barely passed their fucking driving test. And that's the end of that. If you like what I'm doing here on my channel, please consider checking out the Patreon maker, Teespring, and Amazon links in the description down below. If maybe you don't like my stuff that much, that's cool. You can always like, share, comment, and subscribe for more. Peace.